Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is the Ortur Laser Master 2. It is a open frame gantry style CNC laser cutter and engraver. A couple years ago I reviewed something very similar to this and I really hated it. And you guys hated me for hating it. One of the big things that I did is I compared this to my large CO2 laser engraver, which in hindsight was probably not the right thing to do. So when this company reached out to me, I thought, hey, that's some good views because my last video got quite a bit of views. But also, I thought it'd be nice to compare this against itself. You know, what is the purpose of this? Who would be the right customer and audience for this? And really give it more of a fair shake. So let's act like this thing isn't already put together and I'll show you what it's like to actually assemble it. And then we'll run it through a couple different tests and see what it can do. So let's talk about the assembly. The assembly on this was actually pretty straightforward. It comes with a very simple and uh, sparse user manual, but it does have a QR code, and it brought me to a URL that had all sorts of different instructions on how to assemble it and how to use it and everything. And yeah, I really didn't run into any issues, and that's why I'm not really gonna focus too much on the assembly. Everything was pre-assembled as much as it could be. It was basically just kind of broken down for shipping. And um, everything was obvious. Everything went together really easy. They did have included tools, although, you know, I, of course, used my own Allen wrenches. Um, but other than that, yeah, everything went together. The wires were in a loom. The video caught off um, before I got to the actual wiring. But everything just kind of plugged in and um, start to finish. It only took about a half an hour to get this thing up and running and assembled. So as I just said in the previous clip, the assembly was pretty straightforward. This gantry comes pre-assembled, so you don't have to mess with all these wheels and pulleys and all that. You just kind of have to run the belts through, assemble the frame, shove on the gantry, add the wiring, and that's pretty much all there is to it. So it is pretty simple. Uh, maybe, you know, 15, 20 minutes actual assembly time once you get the manual loaded up and all that good stuff. Um, I really didn't run into anything, so there's really nothing to talk about. Let's talk about the actual specs of this thing. So you have 400 millimeters worth of travel in the X direction, and that's what 15.7 inches. And then in the Y direction, you have 430 millimeters worth of travel, which is about 17 inches, give or take. So it's a pretty good size travel. The laser itself is a 20 watt module. 20 watt module. I'm putting that in air quotes because these modules for some reason are rated by the input power, not necessarily the laser output power. So it's a 20 watt input, but the actual output of the laser is a five to five and a half watt. So my big CO2 laser over here, which I knew I wasn't gonna pair it against, but just for comparison's sake, that is a 60 watt laser, meaning that out of the laser tube, it is producing 60 watts of laser power. This is only producing five or five and a half watts of laser power at the output. So just something to keep in mind. This is a um, fixed laser focusing thing. So it comes with this little um, piece of metal and that is what you use to focus. And this is pretty common. That's kind of what mine has too. You basically just move the laser module to where this is touching the bottom of what you're cutting. And then this top touches the bottom of the lens and having this actual mechanism is kind of nice. I have dealt with lasers to where you have to sit there and adjust the focus lens. Those are really annoying because you kind of have to have the laser on and then your hands around and focus it. And it just is a pain. It's much easier to just set this on something, drop the laser down to it, and then tighten that little knob. So that's pretty cool. Um, last little things in terms of specs. This does have a 32-bit controller up in front. So it is actually pretty smooth, pretty quiet. And um, the thing that I really liked about this laser is that it doesn't have its own custom, weird, terrible software that it comes with. It works with Laser Gerbil or Lightburn. And I actually use Lightburn for that one, and that's what I use at work on the laser I have at work. So I'm gonna be using Lightburn with this. It is a really great piece of software. So I'm kind of just removing the whole software aspect to this because that is a known good piece of software. So let's fire that up and see what happens when we um, try to burn something with this. Safety first, 
I've got Lightburn loaded up. You just basically need a single USB cable connected into your computer and then the power supply. There's just a simple on off button on the front. You hold that and the thing turns on and I have it moved over to this location because I'm going to do some engraving. Lightburn is pretty simple. You just kind of, you know, file, import, import your image, set the size. I'm not going to do a full tutorial on Lightburn because there's a lot going on here, but there are instructions on how to add your laser. So down here I've got devices and I've got the laser added in there. It automatically added the um, dimensions and you set where the origin is. This case, it's the bottom left. This is the front of the machine. So I'm going to put on these glasses and we're going to do a test engraving. There we go, I'll get a closer view of this, but it looks, looks really good, looks really decent. Um, yeah, let me get a closer view of this. So this is just a little doodle that my wife did a long time ago, and if you look at it, it's, it's very smooth. I'm pretty darn happy with this. This is kind of hand-drawn, so normally you would see a lot of kind of jaggies along there, but it looks really solid. This was done at 100% laser and 100 millimeters per second, so it's a bit different than what the instructions said in terms of speed. I gotta kind of figure out what the, what exactly they mean because they said like S800. I don't really know what that translates to, but 100 millimeters per second at 100% power is what got me this result. And it looks really nice, really clean. I don't really see any issues with this. So let's um, try cutting performance. Let's see um, how much a five watt laser can cut. Okay, so this first circle was cut at, I think, 10 millimeters a second at 100% power, and it's clean, but it didn't go all the way through. The second one was at 5 millimeters a second at 100% power, and it left um, a bit too much burning. So somewhere in between there, maybe 7, 7.5 millimeters per second. But overall, that is very clean. And let's see, where's my calipers? Four. Yeah, this is 24.7 by 24.8, and this is supposed to be about 25 millimeters. So yeah, that is right within where it should be. So not too bad. So in terms of performance, how much material can you cut and engrave with a five watt laser? Well, cutting performance, not a whole lot. This is a 16th of an inch or about 1.5 millimeters thick, and that was running at five millimeters a second. You can realistically really only go down to about one millimeter a second. So it doesn't necessarily mean you can cut five times this because the laser is kind of a cone. I'd say reliably you could cut maybe up to an eighth of an inch or three millimeters thick. You might end up having to do two passes to do that and it's gonna be very, very, very slow. But machines like this really aren't aimed at cutting performance. That's where you get the big CO2 lasers. They can actually cut 
Um, I think I can do almost a half an inch with mine with a little bit of tweaks. That's just not what these are for. This little laser diode can only do so much. So it's really more of an engraving machine. Um, I have this little list pulled up. This is from the manual. These are some of the things that you should be cutting or engraving with the machine. Uh, cardboard, paperboard, very thin plywoods, craft paper, like cork board, uh, cotton cloth, um, leathers, things like that. These are the types of things that this machine is well suited for. So think of very thin things like cutting cloth works really well with this, cutting, la uh, cutting leather, things like that. It's very thin materials. Once you start getting into thick materials like this, I can shove this in my 60 watt laser cutter, my CO2, and cut this. This just is never going to do it. You're never, ever, ever gonna get through this unless maybe you do like 20 passes and just kind of keep stacking it up and it's just gonna be a terrible, terrible cut. So very thin materials is what you're gonna be cutting and you're gonna be engraving just about anything. Um, it's really difficult to say what these can and can't engrave because there's just an infinite number of materials out there. But generally speaking, lasers are going to penetrate into non-reflective organic surfaces. So a lot of stones can actually be engraved like marbles, um, alabaster, things like that. Um, I think you can do granite effectively. It's gonna be a little bit slower, but it will work. And then kind of any natural material like a wood, fiber, leather, things like that. So keep that in mind when you're purchasing a machine like this. So this kind of begs the question, who is this machine for and who would find a good use for this? I think this is a really good machine for doing small craft projects um, like, you know, the thing I just did making like little magnets, engraving wood, things like that. If you're doing very thin cutouts, you know, doing layer stack ups, I've seen a lot of really cool things where people stack up very thin layers. That's what this machine is going to excel at. If you need this large format, it works well for that. Also woodworkers. Um, I see a lot of people making cutting boards and charcuterie boards and things like that. This would be a great way to engrave the underside, you know, with your brand, your logo, whatever it is. Um, you could make a checks, chess board, checkers board, I don't know. It, it's gonna be good for those types of things where you want to engrave a large surface area. It moves nice and smooth. It actually moves pretty quickly. It actually has a pretty good uh, motion to it. I really like that about it. So that's really who it's gonna be for. If you really want to use this for cutting large things, that's just really not the right purpose for this. The five watt laser is just not well suited for that. So this is the conclusion of the video where I kind of give my final assessment. You know, would I use this? Do I think it's worth it? All that good stuff. I actually really do like this thing. Um, I kind of kicked myself when I'm like, oh, am I really gonna review another one of these things? Because I just absolutely hated the first one and it was just kind of a waste of my time. This one's actually really nice. Um, I think the biggest difference between this and the other one is the, the mechanical side of this is just better thought out. The other one was just, they were trying to use off the shelf parts from a hardware store and put something together and it was just junk. It just felt like junk. This one actually feels really nice and it moves smoothly, all that good stuff. I think the other biggest thing about this is the controller. This actually has a really nice controller. My argument or complaint against the other one is that every time you plugged it in, the laser would go high. It would turn on and just boop, you know, burn a little hole in your workbench or your hand or your eyes or whatever. It didn't really have a proper controller. They were trying to shoehorn like an Arduino into it and you had to use their really terrible proprietary software. The fact that this has a real controller that works the way it should and integrates in with let me just tab over there into Lightburn or Laser Gerbil. The fact that it uses industry standard software is really nice and it operates exactly how you'd think. It recognizes quickly. They're actually using a standard um, USB driver. It's not some weird proprietary driver that never wants to load. Everything is just nice and simple in the way you'd expect. The downside is this is a little bit more expensive than some of the alternatives. I think the other one was like $250. This one's about $400. So geez, you get what you pay for? Is that how that works? Um, at $400, I think it's a reasonable value. It is a little bit expensive because you can get a lot cheaper models out there that do the same thing. But given the amount of work area that you have, the fact that it has a 20 watt or five watt laser, and it is has a good manual, everything seems to be kind of fit together. I think it's a decent value. I'm gonna end up actually keeping this. The other one I sold, 
like a week after I got it. I basically just kind of gave it away. It was out of my shop. I was never, ever, ever going to use that thing. This I will actually find a use for, and this will remain in my shop as kind of an alternative to the big laser cutter, where maybe I want to engrave or cut on something that I can't fit into the bed. That is the nice thing, is this is relatively lightweight. It's portable. You can just set it down on top of the thing that you're going to do. Downsides to a machine like this. I kind of talked about this in my other review video, and I'll link that down below. The downside to these machines is they just don't have the enclosure, and they don't have all the stuff that goes with it. The reason why these won't ever cut as well as a larger laser is, one, the power, and two, they don't have an air assist. When you're cutting that material away, it has nowhere to go, so you just kind of keep recutting it over and over. With a larger machine, you have air that goes through the nozzle and actually blows those parts particles away and so that the laser can actually penetrate further down. This also doesn't have any fume extraction and um, I guess the laser is not going to overheat. The bigger ones have like a laser chiller and things like that, but this, this is fine. So really I think that's the biggest thing is no air assist and no fume exhaust. It means that if you're doing a lot of really big jobs, I mean it, it already smells like a campfire in here. It's going to get really smoky so you might want a fan, things like that. and. I also really don't like relying on the laser goggles because let's be honest, you know, it could just bounce off and I don't know if you forget to put them on. It's just nice having a laser inside an enclosure. But if you know what you're working with and you're comfortable with all of those um, caveats, I think this is a really decent little machine. I'm pretty happy to have found one that works the way I kind of thought it would. So. That is my two cents. Um, that being said, of course, they sent this to me for free. They told me to make this video, so you can believe me if you want. You don't have to. There is an Amazon affiliate link down below, so if you like what you saw and you think, oh yeah, that's the laser for me, you can use that link down below and I'll get like a nickel or something out of it. It's pretty trivial. Um, but of course, you don't have to use that link. You can just go buy it on your own or you don't have to buy anything. I don't care. Do what you want. Uh, so that is my conclusion to this video. I actually ended up liking this thing. So yeah, who would have thought? As always, check me out on Facebook for any updates to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.